All right, hey everybody. So if you just tuned in, I apologize. My connection dropped off on me at the back of the parking lot. Today's Tuesday, May 9th, which makes this day nine of Budget Watch 2017. Although to be fair, uh, we didn't start the Budget Watch until the month of May, which is the very last month of the session. Technically, uh, this is closer to day 93 of Budget Watch 2017. Uh, and honestly, we've known about the budget shortfall since last session, right? Since last year. Um, we knew this probably two years ago when the legislature did not pass any kind of substantial uh, recurring revenue solutions. And so we just keep kicking the can down the road a little bit. Uh, so here we are, uh, day nine. Maybe the more important date is that all revenue increasing measures have to be to the governor's desk by next Friday, May 19th. So that gives us eight and a half working days to get something to her. It's gotta start in the House, it's gotta go through the Senate, uh, it's gotta pass JCAB in both chambers and the floor in both chambers. We know things can go quickly. They passed Real ID in about a week, uh, early on in session. Uh, but as it gets towards the end, stuff grinds to a halt. They'll be working late, be working long hours every day this week, probably every day next week, trying to get this passed. Uh, what's crazy to me is that I guarantee we could get almost all of it done in two days. We could, we could get it through if they really wanted to. Uh, a, a tiny bit of good news is that I'm hearing today that, uh, well, yesterday the, there was two press conferences that came out. Uh, leader Inman said, uh, House Leader, uh, Minority Leader Inman said, that there was a budget agreement between the House Democrats and House Republicans, and that the Republicans said uh, that the Senate would be on board if it got passed. And then it, <laughs> he was going into caucus meeting to tell his his caucus, "Hey, we got a deal uh, for only about 400 million." To be clear, this would not even be half of what we need. But 400 million is not uh, it's a you know more than you shake a stick at. Um, anyway, so they he went in and got a phone call. Nope, deals off. So he had a press conference saying we had a deal and it was off. A short time later, like less than an hour, uh, Speaker Pro Tem of the Senate, Mike Schultz, had a press conference that said there was no deal, there's never a deal. So my hunch of what happened is that House uh, Democrats Republicans made a deal and the House Republicans said, you know what, we can sell the Senate on this, and they couldn't. The Senate's been uh, a rogue agent, uh, at least the Senate leadership, kind of all session. It's been, it's been a little weird this year. As far as I can tell, I'm still new to this, and uh, but from reports I get, and it looks like that came up yesterday. Uh, and then uh, the Speaker Pro Tem or uh, Senate Pro Tem Schultz threw out something about marble games and the casinos. So I'm like, listen, that's if you're bringing that up now, you're way too late to the game. Let's be honest. And when I thought about it, I made a comment yesterday in our video that I feel like our state lacks vision. And uh, that our leaders lack vision. And I've thought about that all night uh, and talked to some friends, and I'm thoroughly convinced that is the case. Like, my, my fellow Oklahomans, like, I think what we all want is man, we want to believe that we're better than 49. We know that we are. We want our leaders in this building to believe that and to act like it, right? But if we could pass some revenue, some real revenue, not just enough to, like, skate by, to get us by another year, to kick the can down the road yet again, thinking, oh, we'll fix it next year. No, you won't. You didn't fix it last year, or the year before that, or the year before that. Why are we going to trust you to fix it next year? What we want to see is some real revenue solutions. Like, dream big here, folks. Have a vision. Have a plan for what the state could be. Don't just try to fill the hole to get by. Think about what would happen if we actually invested in our state. What would it look like if we didn't just keep the teachers we have without giving them a raise? What if we kept the ones we have, we gave them a raise, and we had money to hire back the ones we lost to Texas last year and this year? What if we had enough money to actually hire uh, enough people to work in our corrections um, so that we weren't uh, at 120% capacity and 70% staffing? What if we had enough uh, police and fire to adequately patrol our roads? What if our rural hospitals uh, could not just stay open but maybe expand? What if we could attract doctors to go work in those rural areas? What if DHS what, didn't have to require federal intervention to do their job? What if they had enough money and enough support that they could care for the kids and we could get kids into foster homes? This is vision. People like, this is not a big deal. I'm just a guy standing in the parking lot wearing a stupid life vest, uh, coming up off the cuff with ideas that I guarantee people in this building have 
that they would like to see passed. So what we need to, what I think we need to see is some vision and some courage by people of both parties. Now there's a lot of folks that have stood up and said this is what we want to do, and there's a lot of vision in this building. It's super exciting to have conversations with some of our leaders and say, you know what I think we should do, and they've got great ideas. So I don't know if it's people at the top. It seems to be really weird that we haven't heard much from Speaker McCall in the House. He's been oddly silent. Same thing with uh, Spro with Pro Tem Schultz. He came out yesterday um, and said a few things, but he had the floor leader, Greg Treat, out there with him, and it wasn't really sure who was leading that press conference. Uh, the governor's tried at the last minute here to throw out some kind of leadership ideas. Uh, unfortunately, I think she, some of our ideas aren't good, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but damn it, man, like have someone stand up um, and inspire people. Give us some vision. Show us what Oklahoma could be if we tried. We're sick of being 49. So I think what we need to do is that we need to, uh, legislators need to think about what their legacy could be. Because I guarantee your legacy is not, you're not gonna be known as the 56 legislature that passed another resolution about abortion that nobody cares about and doesn't do anything. You're not gonna be known as the legislature that, uh, that uh, took a stand against Obama again, even though he's out of office. You're not gonna be the legislature that was known for allowing us to hunt hogs from a helicopter, right? These things don't matter. What matters is that you choose to invest in the lives of Oklahomans, that you choose to hold the door open, to prop it open, and to put some real revenue behind our state to show, uh, show not just the people of this state, the people of this country, that Oklahoma is more than just a flyover state. We've got stuff to offer here. If you go to our, go to our state parks, uh, they are falling apart. They're gonna close some if we don't have funding, and, but even if they stay open, I tell you what, I, I, I drive a Nissan Altima and I've bottomed out so many times trying to get down a gravel road in a state park so I can camp uh, overnight. That's because we don't care. Our state's given up, we don't fund these kinds of things. Like I'll donate, I try to smooth out gravel, I try to do my part. Um, and that's, a, that's something that we can have such pride in. We've got a beautiful state. If only had enough money. So, uh, got friends that are showing up and are staring at me while I talk on the on to my phone here. Um, but seriously, like we could be so great. And so I really encourage any legislators that happen to see this, and please feel free to share this on your Facebook page or on Twitter. Uh, I'll put this on YouTube in a little bit. That challenge lawmakers to ask what their legacy is going to be. What do they want to be known for when this session is over? Do they want to be known as the ones who turn their back on Oklahoma chose to neglect those that need the services the most, or do they choose to be known for the legislature, the 56 legislature, that said, we're gonna do the right thing, we're gonna take the hard vote, and we're going to give Oklahomans the state they deserve. It may cost a little bit more, it may cost you and I to pay a little bit more money, it may cost big businesses to pay a little bit more money, but I'll tell you what, we'd get something out of it. Right now we're paying taxes and we're getting diddly. Just make that difference. All right, I promise I'm not gonna get so angry every time. No, I don't promise that. I might get more angry. Uh, maybe something about this orange vest. You guys have a good day. Again, call right. Um, I'm hearing there's some movement in the Senate on gross production tax, so this is good. Your phone calls are working. Your emails are working. Keep doing it. Also, tomorrow, 9 o'clock, we'll be here. Be more videos. It'll be lots of people. It'll be a fun time. I promise not to wear the vest. Uh, so you guys show up. We'll see you then.